Kamla Uppsala, Swedish, raised to the power of two Amla raised to the power of two Sla. Old Uppsala is a parish and a village outside Uppsala in Sweden. It had 17,973 inhabitants in 2016. 1. As early as the 3rd century AD and the 4th century AD and onwards, it was an important religious, economic and political center. 2. Early written sources show, clarification needed, that already during prehistory, Kamla Uppsala was well known in northern Europe as the residence of the kings of Svealand of the legendary Ingling dynasty. 3. In fact, the oldest Scandinavian sources, such as Inglingadal, the Westrogothic law and the Gutasaga talk of the king of Suons as the king at Uppsala. 4. During the Middle Ages, it was the largest village of the planned, the eastern part of which probably originally formed the core of the complex of properties belonging to the Swedish crown, the so-called Uppsala Ad, of which the western part consisted of the royal estate itself, Kungsgården. 5. It was also the location of the thing of all Swedes which was a thing, general assembly, held from prehistoric times to the Middle Ages, at the end of February or early March. 6. It was held in conjunction with a great fair called Disting, and a Norse religious celebration called Disablot. 7. 8. The law of the planned informs us that it was at this assembly that the king proclaimed that the Liedang would be summoned for warfare during the summer, and all the crews, rowers, commanders and ships were decided. 9. It was not only the Norse cultic center, it also became Sweden's archbishopric in 1164. 10. Contents. Show. Geographical description. Edit. Gamla Uppsala lies on Ferris Wolds, a cultivated plain in the valley of the river Ferris which is densely populated in its southern part, while the northern part consists of farms. Religious importance. Edit. Main article. Temple at Uppsala, a composite model of Gamla Uppsala from throughout history, as exhibited at the local museum. Medieval Scandinavians held Gamla Uppsala as one of the oldest and most important locations in Scandinavia. The Danish chronicler Saxo Grammaticus held Odin himself to have resided in Gamla Uppsala far back in the mists of time. At this time there was one Odin, who was credited over all Europe with the honor, which was false, of Godhead, but used more continually to sojourn at Uppsala, and in this spot, either from the sloth of the inhabitants or from its own pleasantness, he vouchsafed to dwell with somewhat a special constancy. 11. This tradition was also known by the Icelandic historian Snorri Sturluson, who, however had Odin reside in nearby Forn Sigtuna, whereas the god Freer lived in Gamla Uppsala. 12. Freer is also said to have founded two of the central institutions of Iron Age Sweden, the Uppsala Ad and the Temple at Uppsala. Frey took the kingdom after Njord, and was called Drott by the Swedes, and they paid taxes to him. He was, like his father, fortunate in friends and in good seasons. Frey built a great temple at Uppsala, made it his chief seat, and gave it all his taxes, his land, and goods. Then began the Uppsal domains, which have remained ever since. 12. Saxo Grammaticus adds that Freer began the human sacrifices at Gamla Uppsala. Also Frey, the regent of the gods, took his abode not far from Uppsala, where he exchanged for a ghastly and infamous sin offering the old custom of prayer by sacrifice, which had been used by so many ages and generations, for he paid to the gods abominable offerings, by beginning to slaughter human victims. 13. The sacrifices at the temple at Uppsala are described by Adam of Bremen. At this point I shall say a few words about the religious beliefs of the Swedes. That nation has a magnificent temple, which is called Uppsala, located not far from the city of Sigtuna. In this temple, built entirely of gold, the people worship the statues of three gods. 14. A general festival for all the provinces of Sweden is customarily held at Uppsala every nine years. Participation in this festival is required of everyone. Kings and their subjects, collectively and individually, send their gifts to Uppsala. And, a thing more cruel than any punishment, those who have already adopted Christianity by themselves off from these ceremonies. The sacrifice is as follows. Of every kind of male creature, nine victims are offered. By the blood of these creatures it is the custom to appease the gods. Their bodies, moreover, are hanged in a grove which is adjacent to the temple. This grove is so sacred to the people that the separate trees in it are believed to be holy because of the death or putrefaction of the sacrificial victims. There even dogs and horses hang beside human beings. A certain Christian told me that he had seen 72 of their bodies hanging up together. The incantations, however, which are usually sung in the performance of a libation of this kind are numerous and disgraceful, and it is better not to speak of them. 14. In the scolia, there is an additional description. Near that temple is a very large tree with widespread branches which are always green both in winter and summer. What kind of tree it is nobody knows. There is also a spring there where the pagan are accustomed to perform sacrifices and to immerse a human being alive. As long as his body is not found, the request of the people will be fulfilled. A golden chain encircles that temple and hangs over the gables of the building. Those who approach see its gleam from afar off because the shrine, which is located on a plain, is encircled by mountains so situated as to give the effect of a theater. For nine days feasts and sacrifices of this kind are celebrated. Every day they sacrifice one human being in addition to other animals, so that in nine days there are 72 victims which are sacrificed. This sacrifice takes place about the time of the vernal equinox. 14. It was a symbolic moment when Pope John Paul II visited Scandinavia in 1989 and held an open-air mass at the Royal Mounds in Gamla Uppsala, as this was a Norse religion cultic center, which became Sweden's first archbishopric in 1164. 15. In 2000, citation needed, the Swedish Asatru Society restarted the tradition of holding bloats at Gamla Uppsala. 16. The 16th century Archbishop of Uppsala Johannes Magnus asserted that the city was anciently founded by, and named for, an early Swedish king named Ubbo. Uppsala equals Ubbo's Hall, 
who would have supposedly reigned Ka 2300 BC. However, in the absence of any corroborating evidence, Magnus' accounts no longer enjoy widespread acceptance among scholars today. History. Edit. It is a testimony to the sanctity of the location in the midst of followers of medieval Norse religion that Gamla Uppsala was the last stronghold of pre-Christian Norse Germanic kingship. During the 1070s and 1080 there appears to have been a renaissance of Norse religion with the magnificent temple at Uppsala described in a contested account through an eyewitness by Adam of Bremen. Adam of Bremen relates of the Uppsala of the 1070s and describes it as a pagan cult center with the enormous temple at Uppsala containing wooden statues of Odin, Thor and Freer. Sometime in the 1080s the Christian king Imdi was exiled for refusing to perform the sacrifices. Instead Blotzween was elected, but he was killed by Imdi who could then reclaim his throne. Its great importance in Swedish tradition led to the location of Sweden's first archbishopric in Gamla Uppsala in 1164. In practice, however, it had lost its strategic importance when it gradually lost ready access to navigable waters as the land rose owing to the constant post-glacial rebound. Archaeology. Edit. People have been buried in Gamla Uppsala for 2,000 years, since the area rose above water. Originally there were between 2,000 and 3,000 mounds in the area but most have become farmland, gardens and quarries. Today only 250 barrows remain. In the parish there are more than 1,000 preserved archaeological remains, but many more have been removed by agriculture. There are cairns of splintered stone that reveal that the area was settled during the Nordic Bronze Age, but most of the grave fields are from the Iron Age and the Viking Age. The great grave field south of the Royal Mounds is from the Roman Iron Age and the Germanic Iron Age. Near the vicarage, a few unburnt graves from the Viking Age have been excavated. Under the present church in Gamla Uppsala have been found the remains of one or several large wooden buildings. Some archaeologists believe that they are the remains of the Temple of Uppsala, while others hold that comes from an early Christian wooden church. Churches were often built on pre-Christian sacred sites, though, adjacent to the present church there is a plateau of clay, the plateau of the royal estate Kungsgårdsplitten, on which archaeologists have found the remains of a large hall. The Royal Mounds. Edit. The three large royal mounds at Gamla Uppsala. The same mounds as shown in Susha Antiqua et Hodirna. C. 1007 700. The Royal Mounds, Swedish, Kungshagarna, is the name for the three large barrows which are located in Gamla Uppsala. According to ancient mythology and folklore, it would be the three gods Thor, Odin and Freer lying in Kungshagarna or Uppsala Hagar, from the Old Norse word Hagar meaning mound or barrow, cognate English how. 17. In the 19th and 20th centuries, they were speculated to hold the remains of three kings of the legendary House of Inglings and were thus known by the names Ons Mound, Adil's Mound and Edgel's Mound. Today their geographical locations are instead used and they are called the Eastern Mound, Middle Mound and Western Mound. They are dated to the 5th and 6th centuries. As Sweden's oldest national symbols they are even depicted on the covers of books about the Swedish national identity. In the 6th century, Gamla Uppsala was the location of royal burials. The location was chosen carefully and in order to make them majestic. The two mulae were constructed on top of the ridge. By burning the dead king and his armor, he was moved to Valhalla by the consuming force of the fire. The fire could reach temperatures of 1,500 degrees Celsius. The remains were covered with cobblestones and then a layer of gravel and sand and finally a thin layer of turf. Thus he, Odin, established by law that all dead men should be burned, and their belongings laid with them upon the pile, and the ashes be cast into the sea or buried in the earth. Thus, said he, everyone will come to Valhalla with the riches he had with him upon the pile, and he would also enjoy whatever he himself had buried in the earth. For men of consequence a mound should be raised to their memory, and for all other warriors who had been distinguished for manhood a standing stone, which custom remained long after Odin's time. It was their faith that the higher the smoke arose in the air, the higher he would be raised whose pilot was, and the richer he would be, the more property that was consumed with him. Comma Inglinga Saga, an old controversy and its solution. Edit. In the 1830s, some scholars claimed that the mounds were pure natural formations and not barrows. This affront to ancient Swedish national symbols could not be accepted by the few Future Swedish King Karl XV and in order to remove any doubt, he decided to start an excavation. 18. The task was given to Brewer Emil Hildebrand. 18. The Director General of the National Archives. In 1846. 18. He undertook the excavation of the 9 meters tall, 30 ft, eastern mound with the hope of finding the grave of a Swedish king of old. The eastern mound. Edit. Black and white photograph of a helmet fragment from the east mound at Gamla Uppsala helmet fragment from the east mound. The excavation was complex and generated a lot of publicity. A 25 meter long, 82 ft, tunnel was dug into the mound, where they found a pot of clay filled with burnt bones and around it there were the remains of the chaired grave offerings. Among the most important finds in the eastern mound were many fragments of decorated bronze panels with a dancing warrior carrying a spear. These panels have probably adorned a helmet of the Vendel Age type, common in a plan, the only foreign examples being the Sutton Hu and Staffordshire helmets. There were also finds of gold which probably had adorned a scramus axe, but according to another interpretation, they were part of a belt. The dead was also given several glass beakers, a taffel game, a comb and a hone. Most scholars agree that the mound was either raised for a woman or for a young man and a woman as the remains of a woman and boy were found. 18 Hildebrand reburied most of the remains, so a new excavation will need to be undertaken before the controversy can be settled. What is quite certain is that the dead belonged to a royal dynasty, the Western Mound. Edit. The 1874 excavation. In 1874, Hildebrand started an excavation of the Western Mound and opened an enormous shaft right into the cairn in the center of the mound. Under the cobblestones, there were the chaired remains of the funeral fire. In the Western Mound were found the remains of a man, 18, and animals, probably for food during the journey. The remains of a warrior's equipment were found, 18. Luxurious weapons and other objects, both domestic and imported, show that the buried man was very powerful. These remains include a Frankish sword adorned with gold and garnets and a board game with Roman pawns of ivory. He was dressed in a costly suit made of Frankish cloth with golden thread.
sets, and he wore a belt with a sumptuous buckle. There were four cameos from the Middle East, 18, which were probably part of a casket. The finds show the distant contacts of the people of the planned in the 6th century. The church. Edit. Main article. Gamla Uppsala Church The church was the Archbishopric of Sweden prior to 1273, when the Archbishopric was moved to Austriaris. Austriaris was then renamed Uppsala due to a papal request. The old cathedral was probably built in the 11th century, but finished in the 12th century. The stone building may have been preceded by a wooden church and probably by the large temple at Uppsala. After a fire in 1240, the nave and transepts of the cathedral were removed, leaving only the choir and central tower, and with the addition of the sacristy and the porch gave the church its present outer appearance. In the 15th century, vaults were added as well as chalk paintings. Among the medieval wooden sculptures there are three crucifixes from the 12th. 13th and 15th centuries. Valerius, Archbishop of Uppsala, is buried here. Eric Ix of Sweden was as well, before being moved to Uppsala Cathedral, the church from the west, from the southeast. Plan, 1908, showing the present church in black. Notes, edit, jump up cap http, colon slash slash, www.gianames.org slash 2661886 slash Sweden HTML jump up cap Hedinius, Stig, Nilsson, Torbjorn and Aselius, Gunnar 1996, Sverigeus Historia, Central Trickery, Boris, ISBN 91 34 51857, 6 page 83, Uppsala, Fron 200 och 300 Talon et Betitent Economist, Religious och Politist Centrum i Malardalen, Translation, Uppsala, was from the 3rd and 4th centuries an important economic, religious and political center in the Malaran Basin, Jump Up Cap the article Gamla Uppsala, Subsection Historia, in Nationaler Neuklaw Perdin, 1992. Titika script like a caller visor at G redden under forented and varvit berumt i norden som sot fars v kongarna aft en mitem spun ingling gotten and translation. Early written sources show that G as early as prehistoric times was widely famous in the Nordic countries as the residence of the Swedish kings of the legendary Ingling dynasty. Jump up cat Mark Nilane, Lena, 1995. Gamla Uppsala, the King of ABC, Swedish Museum of National Antiquities, ISBN 9171929843, retrieved 2007-2008-09, Svirikuts kung omtula som kungen i Uppsala bl i inglingadal, gutasagan och aldervast gudeligens bigen om grans dragning. Translation, Sweden's king is mentioned as the king at Uppsala in for instance inglingadal, the gutasaga and in the Westergothic laws appendix on the establishment of the border. Jump up cat the article Gamla Uppsala, subsection historia, in Nationaler Neuklaw Perdin, 1992, under Medeltid and Vargia plans starts to by Vars Ustra Deller Sprunglegen Tord Ha Bildet Korn and Idet SK, Uppsala Ad, Kronen Scots Complex, Och Vars Vostra Del Up Jords Jalva Kungsgorden. Translation, during the Middle Ages, G was the largest village of the planned, whose eastern part originally should have been the core of the so-called Uppsala Ad, the complex of estates of the crown, and whose western part consisted of the royal estate itself. Jump Up Cat Fallen, Nina 2001, Lansting, Medeltidens ABC, Swedish Museum of National Antiquities, ISBN 9151839261 Jump Up Cat The Article Disatinjuk, in the Encyclopedia Nordic Familjabok Jump Up Cat The Article Disadlet In the Encyclopedia Nordisk Familjabok Jump Up Cap Soderberg Werner 1896 Nagra Studier Raran de Sassigan In Samlaran Page 67 Jump Up Cap KG Hamar Fick Vanta Kierkens Tidning NR 14 2005 Jump Up Cap Saxo Grammaticus Gesta Denorum Book 1 Translated by Oliver Elton At the online medieval and classical library Cat Jump Up 2 A B Snorri Sturluson Inglinga Saga Translated by Samuel Lang At Northvigar Archived November 26, 2006 At the Wayback Machine Jump Up Cap Saxo Grammaticus Gesta Denorum Book 3 Translated by Oliver Elton At the online medieval and classical library cat jump up to a bc adam of bremen history of hamburg's bishops short online text english jump up cat kg hamar fik vanta permanent dead link Kirkens Tidning, May 14, 2005, Jump Up Cap Spring Blow to Kung Shagarna on Tse, April 4, 2010, in Swedish, Jump Up Cap the Temple of Gold, or Church of Wood, Ground Radar Surveys at Old Uppsala Church, Magnus Alcard, Fornvenen 2005 Cat Jump Up 2, a BCDFG Vice, Daniel, John August 2017, Off the Grid, Archaeology 70, 4, 10, ISSN 0003-8113, retrieved July 2, 2017, via EBSCO's master file complete, subscription required, references, edit, Klingmark, Elizabeth, Gamla Uppsala, Svenska Kulturmen in 59, Riksantik Variambadet, Nationaler Neuklaw Perdin, External Links, Edit, Virtual Tour of Gamla Uppsala Church Archaeological Information Gamla Uppsala, by the Swedish National Heritage Board, Uppsala Official Site, Historical Reference from Adam of Bremen's Gesta Hamabergensis Ecclesiae Pontificum, Book 4, with facing Latin and English text, Coordinates, 59.894 degrees and 17.638 degrees E categories, Archaeological Sites in Sweden Germanic Archaeological Artifacts Romanesque Architecture in Sweden Saga Locations Viking Age Populated Places Neighborhoods of Uppsala, 